Hello, everybody. This is Nicholas Wynn. Arts Brock. Felipe Strada. And Matthew Essington. And we are Tabletop Shenanigans. Woo! Today we will be talking about the new GW price spike. What are what your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, it's pretty insane. I think it's probably outrageously expensive and not really worth it. So what, what what's the example that's going around that's really bothering people nowadays? It's the new uh, Blood of the Phoenix box set that uh, introduces the new Dark Eldar and Eldar models, the re the new cast of the models, at least not new models. Oh, the Psychic Awakening? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Well, so what's the price? Oh, well, the price is set at a super steep $230. I think uh, I'm going to put my xenophobia aside and just look at it from somebody that actually genuinely would consider like getting it, but it's just like at two hundred and thirty dollars, that's just incredibly expensive. Even at half of that, it's just not worth it, and it's not even that many models. You look at it from a beginner's point of view, and it's just like I have to spend that much money for just like how many models is it in total? Not very many. Well, like you think about it as well as they made it. They didn't really make it in the point of oh, this is for starters, or this is for people who are just now joining the hobby. It's huh? These are two new sets, no, four new sets of new models. With a whole bunch of other stuff, so let's put it in a box set and then exploit it. That's well, what you have to understand. Like. There's a tax for playing Xenos. Like you're already like <laughs> it's already bad enough. You want to play Eldar, so I think I think hot take. Oh my god, it's, it's 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 a good price. I need to mute myself real quick. <laughs> yeah, no, we're just messing around. But seriously, that that's ridiculous. Two hundred thirty dollars for a box versus what one seventy five for the Shadow Spear box? Oh, That's pretty crazy. Models too in it. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think that one's a great deal in general. Yeah, it has a much better model count um, altogether. Has brand new models that we've never seen before. Right. So it's just a, a way new better rules, box value. Came new with the, what was it? The Vigilist attachments. Came, oh, not with it, but like it was like. It came out with it came out with some new models, not not with those attachments. Well, I mean, like the attachments were like something coming yeah. out. Some extra rules for Phobos stuff, um, right? Like those extra twelve inch denial for Deep Strike. And there's other really good things that came in that Shadow Spear box on both sides for for Chaos. Honestly, and Space yeah. Marine. And I mean, just look at some of the other previous box. What was the name of the Eldar and Space Marine box that the Blood Isles? No, um, Wake of Blood or something like that. Wake the Dead or something Wake like that. Dead, I didn't like it. that box set to be honest, but that's. It was, it was a little bit better, just in the sense, like, as far as from the Eldar side, the problem with, in my opinion, the Blood of the Phoenix is the Eldar getting shafted. I, I get I get some brand new uh, some brand new Banshee models and a new character, but then I get a Falchion, hmm. and who uses the Falchion? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you either use a Wave Serpent, you use a Night Spinner, or you're using a... Uh, well, can't you, like choose which one in a box or is it you actually have to like order it that specific one and you get those models i think yeah, don't you don't it. you get to choose which one you want to make i don't think so i think the wave serpent box is completely separate because it has a different turret completely so the okay. wave serpent one's completely separate and i'm pretty sure the fire prism is completely separate too because i commenters prove him wrong let us know in the comments below if he's wrong or not yeah <laughs> and then it also comes with a viper and i don't know very many people that run vipers <laughs> Vipers are kind of... Mm. I don't even know what a Viper is. I mean, if you run three, I know they're not bad, but, like, <laughs> why are you going to run three when you got, like, you know, better stuff? I like that. If you run three, they're not bad. They're not even good. They're just not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the story of 40K. Yeah. Like, things are either bad or not bad or broken. There's nothing that's just okay. Yeah. Uh, Primaris are just okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll give you that. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, like, on the Dark Elder side, you get tons of good models. You get that's Incubi, true. the new Incubi, you get the new Incubi character all in all in plastic, and then you get uh, the Venom, which is a super useful transport, and you get the uh, Scourges, uh, which are a super essential... Trip. Very, very good. And then you model. get Hellions, which are just kind of cool looking. Well, they're, Hellions are the worst of all those of all those in there, and but it doesn't really matter because you're probably never going to run a Hellion in your life. Uh, if, if you're gonna flex, maybe, but yeah, <laughs> flex. I uh, got him. But like, if, you're, if you're doing some shenanigans, then yeah, sure, yeah, hell yeah. We don't uh, have the button yet, guys. We don't, we don't have the button, but well, we will. We will eventually. Uh, scourges are, I, I can't remember 
Oh, there's only a few times when I was playing against Will, our infamous Dark Elder player. Only twice has he not run Scourges in his list. Yeah, you just cook them with Headwire Blasters and they're really good. Or you can give them Dark Lances and obviously they're really, really good. Yeah, or Blasters. <laughs> or Blasters even. Lord. Yeah, Blasters. Those are- buffs on Blasters was uncalled for in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> what buffs? The When, uh, what was it? Dark Eldar went from their index to their codex. They made blasters D6 damage instead of D3. And that's pretty good, I guess. They yeah. reduced the price. Oh, that's huh. cool. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's, like nice. that's four points, I think. Yeah. It was pretty it was pretty insane. And then they made Haywire Blasters better. So you guys are complaining about $230 for new models. And but I'm sitting here. Paying seventy dollars for a squad of Kriegsmen. I don't want to hear it. That's Forge World. That's well, a completely hey, yeah, that's, different hey, that's story. That's your choice, though. Hey, you I got the, I got the, guards, no, 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 I got the worst here. Why am I have to spend forty five dollars for commandos? Because they're bad. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about orcs again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Shooters. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, shooters <laughs> are better than choppers. Daka. 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 Proven here. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, if you think about it, like GW's price model, there is like some method to the insanity to where I feel like probably on like boxes of like like the ten primary squad, you get a ton of options, you get a ton of models and things like that. That's probably not where they make their money. I bet you that they probably lose money on boxes like that because that's very well priced. Where I bet you that they make their money is on like the single characters and things like that. Like the $40, you know, like chapter masters and things like that. Because it's like, you're not getting very much, but it's almost as much as like a 10 man squad or things like that. Well, True. And I, you, you, you need it. You mean, need them. Yeah. You absolutely need them. Well, I mean, I would have, I actually would have thought about buying it if they even made it at 200 because at 200, it wouldn't really seem like they were trying to get your money. It just seemed like, huh, we made a new Jane Czar. Ooh, we made a new Drezar. Uh, we made a new Incubi set. We made new Howling Banshees. And just because we want to, we're adding more stuff to it. And we're going to make it a big box set. And it's going to be new psych- Psychic Awakening, new ideas, new things for Eldar. $200. And even if they, if they did it like that, it seemed like to me that... I guess they just wanted a little bit more money for the new models that they took so long into finally making. And I guess that would make sense rather than 230 because the moment they bumped it up by that much, and it's not that it's expensive for us to buy. It's more like I think no one wants to give them the money because it's not worth it. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. And I mean, of course, most people are going to be splitting the box. So that they, they take that into account when they're pricing it. And also they can. I mean, <laughs> that's I would never split that box. It would just feel really bad. Yeah. I mean, you can buy buy your rain and uh, just run it as you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually upset. Ooh. Every other box you have to split. Like, where's my Guardsman versus Guardsman box? Where's oh my, my like God. Space Marine versus Space Marine box? Yeah, right? where, where, yeah. Where is well, that? There, that Shadow Spirit. Yeah, where's Dark Vengeance? Space where's Dark Vengeance 2.0 when you need it? Right. Yeah. Why isn't there more Death Guard in the market? To be honest, <laughs> can we get can we get a new Mortarian model, please? Like, <laughs> no. Yeah. Where's my Night Lord characters? Let's uh, let's focus on some. Um, Let's focus on some other Primarchs, not not redoing Primarchs we already have. <laughs> yeah, why can't we make Grass Girl Thraka? Why can't Come we on. have Portorabo? Like, Por- what? <laughs> where's his head at? <laughs> so it feels like they're actually going, like, obviously, GW being GW, they're going to concentrate on Space Marines first, and now it seems like they're shifting a little bit of their the attention on, like, Eldar and things like that. What's going to be the next thing that they're going to be updating? I'm more? telling you, Trader Guardsman is next on the list. No. I can see that. Trader Guardsman, yes. They, I don't uh, see it. I've never many, seen them. How many the models have they created that are just Trader Guardsmen from the Blackstone Fortress boxes? One. There are like two. Yeah, two. two. They have the units and one character. Okay, but like still, how did... how did um? They look nice. They, look, they do look nice. But like... I think it's a hint of what's to come, right? Like, I would really think it'd be cool if we could get Trader Guardsmen. It would be, it would be a cool idea, and I mean, it would be desperately needed for like Chaos Knights. Chaos Knights, if it's like I've always said it before, like Chaos Knights versus Imperial Knights, the Imper- or the Chaos Knights would most likely most of the time win. But whenever you throw in allies and things like that, Imperium is going to win almost every time. Imperium has just better choices with the Imperial Guard and everything. There needs to be a traitor yeah. guard. Mm, you that's at, controversial. I don't know how you think <laughs> about it. The Imperium has so many good buff multipliers, right? Like, if you wanted to, you could make Guardsmen 
with a three up save, five up invuln, or is it six up with a vexilla? Five up, I think it's a five up invuln. Yeah, three up save, five up invuln, six up feel no pain. Of course, you gotta dip into like five different armies to do so, but the, it's the fact that you can get so many buff multipliers, right? Like you can get so many reroll ones to hit or rerolling one wounds ones to wounds to hit, and there's just so many different force multipliers in the Imperium of Man well, that Chaos just does not have. I, I think I think we're gonna see more of a lean towards what they're doing with Space Marines, where they're giving Space Marines these awesome powers, and then they're saying, "Oh, look, if you soup it all." You lose this. Yeah, they they are leaning yeah. heavily into getting yeah. rid of soup because yeah. it's it's harder to like control from the looks of it. I think the problem is I think soup has a place among 40k because like if you look at the lore, like the even though the primarchs all of them don't like each other, they still always work together, right? Like the the, the legions of space marines always still work together. Like you hear stories about salamanders and I don't know iron hands working together or white scars and ultramarines working together and gray knights and the people who are soon to be dead work together because <laughs> you know <laughs> gotta keep them a secret <laughs> but you know what I mean like the, the entire history of 40k has had people working together like even the orcs work together like the different clans oh, always no. they, they oh, work together yeah. yeah they work together just long enough to kill what's there and then kill each other but and that's, take that's, all the teeth all of it but isn't that good that 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 shows that <laughs> everyone works together friendship yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> friendship is uh, the word eaters of, uh, and the word bearers want to work together it, for a little it bit. reminds me of 7th edition and the you could take town uh, eldar in 7th oh. edition can, couldn't you you could take taldar together yep. so I don't want to hear it the <laughs> fact that the eldar would work with tal proves to me that the emperor of mankind can work with chaos. Well, that's basically. because it's for the greater good. I'm. Oh, but uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Eldar will work with everybody. Just be aware that they're probably going to be try to betray you at the end. The so with that in mind, mm. yeah, with mm. that in mind, just make sure to bail out at the they, last they have, possible they have, minute. They have pony ears and pony noses that like to turn up at you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you could like. You. They get I wonder if you could like sharp. tame a single tyrannid. No. I know no. you can't with the hive mind, no. but like, can you like cut them off from the hive mind anyway? You can, uh, I think they If you kill their synapses, that's what, that's what it is. Synapsis yeah. is the hive mind. So when they lose their synapses. What do they become? They become mindless feral. creatures. They're feral, feral, whatever creatures they. But we could, so, so there is a chance is what you're telling me. Mm, you no, can you capture it, but you couldn't tame it. I don't think they have the IQ to be tamed. You don't know that. To be tamed, I'm pretty sure you have to have some sort of intelligence to be aware of your surroundings. But I think they become mindless creatures. Not to get off topic, but like D and D zombies, D and D zombies can be taken over, right? Like if you think about it that way, and if you think about it, I think you can tame a tyranny. I I 100 truly do think you can tame a tyranny. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't know. I think it's possible. I think it's very possible. You just need to give you need to give love a try. All yeah, right. I never give you know <laughs> never give love a try. Every time I... Oh man! Oh my goodness! <laughs> but uh, back on topic, Eldar. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Know, why can't I... why can't bloody axe orcs uh, work with guard? I'm just being honest. You know, <laughs> I mean that'd be kind of cool. Imagine having orcs and guardsmen fight. I mean, you could have a legion of orcs. Our guardsmen, right? Because we see pictures about it all the time. You see the you see the orc advertising. They have literal advertisements about hats, like commissar hats and all these other crazy imperial stuff. It could happen, right? Like anything is possible. Yeah, I don't see it. I, mm. I could see like they could be on the same planet and fighting the same enemy. That's about as close to working together as <laughs> as you're gonna get. You're not gonna yeah. see them like you're not gonna see commissars running around ordering orcs into combat. I don't see it happening. I couldn't see that either. I mean, they already do, right? Because they have the they you have the um in the Bulgrin. Yeah, the Bulgrin and the Bulgrin literally believe they're being talked to by the Emperor. Right? No, 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 they just paint themselves green. And it's like move, get, and then it's like <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> right? <laughs> Salutes. I would absolutely love them to see revamp though some of those older model lines. Like the card does look like it needs some love. There are some models in that line that look absolutely atrocious. I mean, they did it with the Sisters of Battle. The new Sisters of Battle models are actually looking pretty good. 
There's some that I don't like, but for the most part, the model line is actually pretty gorgeous. Yeah, but the Sisters of Battle, that was like oh, yeah, 20, I know. 20 I know. years in the making. I there. know. That wasn't like Guard. Guard get new models like once a year. I think the problem is GW just doesn't know how to sculpt faces. Like, their faces are so scary. Like, not because they're like scary <laughs> scary, but they're just because they're so ugly. In the grim, dark future, there is only war. <laughs> I don't and think everything does look hideous. I, I don't agree. I feel like they can do literally anything. They just choose not to because they're waiting to use it to make more money because they can't like that's their business. I'm not going to say it's wrong because a business is a business. You need to make money somehow. Right? Yeah, they're trickling down new things. Right. That I'm sure they've got like about 15. There's some back room with like a little board where they have like all right this is when we're going to be releasing the new sisters of battle after that the traitor guardsman right after that new orc I mean, model it shows that they do care but then like i remember when the uh lord discorded i'm actually looking at a lord discorded right in my face right now <laughs> and uh you know i remember when they released that i looked at that i was like man i want that and i was like <laughs> let me guess it's gonna be like what 65 dollars and guess what it was 65 dollars and i was like hmm is it worth it Yes. And 100%. I wasn't sure. I was like, I have to get it anyway. It looks so cool. I got it. And I do not. I don't regret that. I do wonder. I do wonder not to get into politics at all. Like how much the Brexit stuff is affecting like their prices and everything. Like, because it does seem like there have been whoa, some whoa, pretty whoa, whoa, huge spikes. Say, America. America. Freedom. Yeah, I know. I know. Brexit doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> What's the band? I so, never heard of anyway. that, sir. Can you explain? <laughs> We're not going to talk about Brexit anyway, or politics look, look stuff at, here. Look at like something like uh, a company like Marvel. They have the next, uh, what, five or seven years planned out for Ooh. what movies and TV shows that they're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. I'm sure GW, who's been around for a lifetime, is a huge company that makes a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, they, they have whole departments that are just sitting there brainstorming every day. And they're probably like 12 years in advance like all right so this is our project for then and then they move on to the next one and then i'm, I'm sure that so i'm curious if we all had to speculate because i'm with i'm with nick i think it's trader guard is going to be the new army what do you guys think next new arm like new army or yeah. like new arm i don't see well first of all trader guard is not a new army it's but i mean thing. like a, a actual with a codex and everything like by gw and everything and not like forge world yeah like in general um I don't think that I don't think we'll have a new army anytime soon. Okay, it's been a while since we've had a new army. I think Admech was the last new. Well, uh, never mind. Knights, the <laughs> Chaos Guard. Knights. What was the say? Knights came yeah. after Admech, but that was it. Like, did Death Guard count? No, Death Guard like, has been around. I mean, for yeah, ever. but like, they're literally one of the original. Like super. I know, but they're like <laughs> super reworked in yeah. a way that you can basically call them a new army. Okay, well then, but would you count that though? I it's don't. Kind of, okay, if you don't count that, then you don't no, count. That. I'm, well, not I'm talking like an actual new, new war new set where we never mm. heard of. It. Like I remember when Tau came out, that was like a new army. Okay, okay. When Necrons came out, that was a new army. Okay. I think. I think the problem is that like. Anything new is just super unlore friendly if you think about it, right? Yeah. Like, 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 how do you? How do we go so long without finding these armies? Like, it's it's different because Admet we've known about them. They've been there since the beginning because they're not even technically a new army. We've talked about them for almost every book about the Imperium that the the Schism of Mars has been a thing for a long time. So even then, it's really hard to say have a new army. That hasn't already been there in the lore. If anything, all right, I was serious at the beginning, but like squats. No, no, <laughs> squats. no, no, no. Why not? Because it's, it's ridiculous. Why would they do that? Wait, wait, wait. What? what? Squats. Squats was like a really old road trader army. They were um, dwarves. Dwarves. With they bolt guns. Dwarves, yeah. yeah. Dwarves with bolt guns. They had like these weird tanks that looked like they should have been playing Age of Sigmar or <laughs> Warhammer fantasy at the time. And guess what? I'm not going to, not not to call GW out, but eh, some of the, the dwarf lines in AOS kind of do look like squats. Just a tiny bit. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, they're dwarves. So how, how, how different can dwarves be? It, it, across any platform, how different the doors I've look. I've never seen any fantasy no, case. They're pretty not. much the same. It's exactly. like super racism. Just saying. <laughs> super racism. <laughs> it's like the same thing with elves. They're all elves. The same. elves are all the same. Well, hold on. My Harlequins and oh my no, your Dark wacky, Eldar are very wacky. different. <laughs> the Blood of the Phoenix box. 
It's just an Eldar Civil War. They're, they're the same people. Big. Elves in any fantasy thing that have been so much different from every other uh, fantasy was the ones in a in a game called Destiny. Not Destiny. Divinity. Oh, yeah. And if you know, if you play Divinity, the elves in there are so much more different because they're second class citizens instead of just being up here where most usually elves are in lore. And also, if they like eat your brains, they can learn things. It's kind of weird. Oh, like space space do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it's what space brains do. They like eat your brains and then like, hey, look, I know Jimmy when he was a kid. It's ba- <laughs> basically, <laughs> how weird is that? That if you eat someone's brains, you get their memories. That's pretty crazy. Um, That's wacky. You know, lore, lore, just just again back on the lore topic of lore. Lore just has some really kooky things. I feel like, like I said, new armies have to have to start for us to see a new army ten years down the road. We have to start hearing about it today in the books. It would be fun if they did what they're kind of doing with uh, with like Ultramarines, um, um, Imperial Fist, and all that, but do it with like the Chaos armies as well too. Please. If like Alpha Legion got its own like supplement codex, Night Lords, so on. So oh, yes, I know Night that, Lords. I know oh, Night really? Lords. The, no, the, the, no, no, no Night Lords. Everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem is the problem is. The reason why we got all that Space Marine stuff was because they were Codex compliant. Mm. And then obviously, Chaos Space Marines aren't Codex compliant, right? Like, we can both agree, we all, like, all four of us can agree that Chaos Space Marines don't follow the Codex of Stardews, right? That's why they're I mean, Chaos Space Marines, right? I mean. yeah, they, don't, they don't really follow <laughs> anything besides what their gut tells them. And they're so different that I feel like to re- properly represent all of the Chaos Space Marines, you would just have to redo them like you did the Black Legion. Right, like when Black Legion came out, it was cool. It was hip. We had Abaddon. We had new Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines. It was cool. But like, I can't really eh? <laughs> take those in other Chaos Space Marines attachments. Right? Yeah, like, it's, it's it's like Death Guard. We just Death Guard yeah, just got a huge it's rework, completely different army. Yeah, yeah. and it eventually it'll either have to be where it's just going to be the same, or they'll all have to become individual armies with their own codex. Which not, is fine. Not codex supplements, but I their own. I think that's codex. fine though. Like, that doesn't seem like a big deal. A lot Thousand of armies Sons and Death it. Guard worked out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Eh, Thousand Sons need some work, <laughs> but you they know. need like a couple, like two, two more uh, new models, and I think they'd be fine. I just think they don't have enough options. I think. I just think the problem right now with the current GW range for everything is is that everyone's so hyped about Space Marines, and then whenever anything after the Space Marines gets released, it's just going to be meh. And that's the problem. Like, everything's like, oh, but Space Marines got this, Space Marines got that. But then everyone else is like, eh, I got some stratagems, I got well, an updated range, that's it. Well, that's what Psychic Awakening feels like they're actually paying attention. Because I, they think they, I think they realize that. And, I mean, the only thing, the only problem with Psychic Awakening for me is the $230 box set. <laughs> It's look, too expensive. Look at look at what we've seen from Psychic Awakening so far. They've already dropped some Eldar stuff, and every Phoenix Lord unit has got some kind of an update. They got some kind of a rework, some yeah. kind of a buff. Amazing. And it's, it's been pretty, really good so and far I, from what I've seen. And I mean, if in Psychic Awakening, they're saying that the Tau, the Tau are getting updated rules, then that should that should tell you something. Well, they said everyone's getting updated rules. Yeah, exactly. it's not necessarily that they're going to get psychic powers. Well, no, no, I don't mean that, that well, they're actually giving some love to the it's, Tau. It's almost now proven because I knew the moment they did the Space Marine successor chapters to where you can choose what your tactics are, the moment I say it, they did that, I was like, they're going to do that for every faction now. Because it makes no sense to not do it for every faction because every faction that can happen to. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like, think what makes the most sense with Guard and Space Marines. Yeah. But why can't other factions happen? Eldar are also very different. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Eldar, they have all the different craft worlds and they're all different. They'll live on different craft worlds. Right. So they would all have different Dark Eldar. Yeah. Wacky. I just don't like I just don't like how they treat different factions like that. Because you know, there's so many different types of Eldar, right? But like if you take a look once upon a time, if you look if you looked at the the guard range, there was Cadian, Kadachin, Talarn, uh, Armageddon, Valhalla, Valhallin, and then Mordian, Steel Legion. Mordian, Steel Legion. Yeah, Vostroyan, Steel Legion, like Death Creep. Krieg. <laughs> we'll stop talking about a, a painful <laughs> subject for me. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that was kinda neat that how you could you could basically play any flavor of guard you wanted. 
I wish we could have that back, and I wish other factions can also have that back. Like it's kind of it's kind of awful that all the towel range models look the same, right? Like it kind of looks boring that no matter what towel step you play, all your suits look the same. I wish they would have like Space Marine upgrade kits, right? But I don't care about the special units. Okay. I just I just care about the aesthetic. Right? Oh, you don't yeah. want like customization. So, so and such. Uh, guard, uh, like you were saying, guard is probably one of the most. Uh, Defined between yeah. the different, yeah. Because I mean, if you want to play Talaran, you literally they're wearing sand cloaks and turbans. That's true. And if yeah. you're playing Valhallen, they're in they big cloaks. Like Polish cloaks, and yeah. they have the hats, the big hats, Russian and the Vostroyans. Yeah. They they all Vostroyans. Yeah, they actually have Nick, like what, their, a, what, their, a, what does Krieg wear? <laughs> <laughs> trench coats and gas masks. Uh, actually, uh, Krieg's a death world. No, man. they are six feet under cosplay. Six feet, <laughs> under, yeah. six feet under the cosplay. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're, they're just over there digging trenches. No big deal. <laughs> they're digging their graveyards before they Basically. even die. It's like, all right, this is a good place to die. Imagine being 14, digging your own grave. Mm. This is where I die. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, I think I think what would be really cool if GW came out with upgrade sprues for every army. Because, like, how many different factions of Eldar are there? There's, pl- I'm sure there's plenty. I don't know anything about Eldar. Like, five or six. Like, imagine if they just made an upgrade sprue. It wouldn't cost them too much. It's like, oh, like, these heads are uniquely to these factions, or, you know, that'd be cool. Like, when the Iron Hands came out, I literally bought, like, four upgrade sprues, just so I can have all my Marines look like true Iron Hands. I mean, that's what I'm doing with my Space Wolves. I'm trying, because Space Wolves, like, they're such a unique, like, looking chap. That's why I love them. Because, like, no two, or no two Space Wolves look exactly the same. Like, they got so much fur all over them and fangs and all that stuff. You can make them so customizable. That's what's fun about like certain armies like that. Black yeah. Templars? Woo! I can't tell you. <laughs> that upgrade sprue is nice. Fire. Fire. <laughs> nice. There you go, as they say. But well, yeah, that's why know. I want for everyone. Like orcs, fine, whatever. Orcs orcs can all look the same. That's fine. That makes sense. <laughs> Did you dare say that to me? Well, like they reproduce by hey, spore. Hey, and you know what's the thing with orcs? Is, the thing with orcs, the best part about orcs is you don't have to have GW sanctioned upgrade kits. You just do whatever the hell you That's want. That's what I was going to say. You know what's the upgrade s- sprue for orcs? Everything, Everything else. else. Yeah. Everything yeah, that's, that's, sprue hey, in the that's game. what I do. You, know? <laughs> you want to orcify that Lehman Russ? Do it. Hey, you want to orcify that Land Raider? Do it. That uh, My knob with the war banner is literally just like scrap put together. Yeah. Like, it's straight up. The the war banner itself is actually just a sprue kit, and I just cut them and then I wrap them together, and then boom. That's it. <laughs> there that's you go. It takes. War and banner, that's, and that's the thing is like orcs don't need that, but I, I would agree that that it would be really hard with Eldar. Like, what are you yeah. gonna, what are you nah. going to do to guardians to make them look different besides with the way you paint yeah, them? It's yeah, it'd be sure. really difficult. Like I know that people so. have a lot of problems with the Primaris line, and I get it. Like going over the lore so much because I've only been into 40k now for about a year and a half and like going over the lore it makes sense why people don't like the idea of primaries but you have to admit that is an incredibly customizable like just model in general it's a very perfect model you can take old sprues from just about everything and throw it on a primaris model it just it just sucks because we have, we now have tactical marines bits everywhere everyone has tactical <sighs> marine bits right like yeah. everyone has yeah. them <laughs> and it's just like, well, this rocket launcher is literally a grenade size in the this, this Space Marine's hand because the Primaris <laughs> is so much taller. But, you know, someone made a good point to me the other day. If you think about it, tactical Marines aren't that much smaller than Primaris. Primaris just have better posture. If you, but if yeah. you look, if you, if you model the tactical Marines as like as if they were standing up holding a gun, rifle, they're actually only like their body portions are more correct. Yes. It's just really sad. Really sad that everyone squatted in, in the 30th <laughs> millennium. <laughs> everyone, yeah, everybody was... Uh, the problem is, is that their, their power armor weighed too much. Yeah. And uh, they're all just kind of like sunk down into their power armor. Uh, just another Tuesday. <laughs> right. <laughs> Primarily so like first off uh, combat. Yeah. Woo. Super pumped. I'm ready. Right. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's a good way to look at it. You know, Space Marines have been fighting for the last 10,000 years. And these new Primaris guys, they're, they're standing 
at tall because yeah, you know, it's just like us. When we get older, we'll shrink. <laughs> the, the weight of us will, will eventually bring us down. The weight of our stages <laughs> of <laughs> the, the weight the weight of the uh, line. The, the, how much the models cost to other people? Uh, that's, that's another trick. Two hundred thirty dollars. Right? Uh, hey, don't tell my wife how much I spent on Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna open this podcast one day and she'll be like, "What? Yikes! <laughs> Yikes! You spent how much money? <laughs> well, you see what happened was it was it was for the podcast, yeah. right? It's for the it's for, it's for the memes. <laughs> well. That's all we have today, guys. Thank you for uh, listening. Uh, this has been Tabletop Shenanigans with Nicholas. Matthew. Felipe. Alex. And we hope to see you all next week. Goodbye.